the polarization of today's political state, if you will, uh, has definitely perverted some attitudes, if you will, and I've definitely noticed it lately. It's tough to accept because I'd never actually personally had to deal with it. So I guess in a way, I was I was really lucky about that. So. Hey fellow workers, my name is Kim Siever and you are listening to episode three of the second season of the Alberta Worker Podcast. We are a proud member of the Labour Radio Network as well as, new of this season, member of the Harbinger Media Network. We are broadcasting from the territory of the Nitsapi and I am pleased to introduce you to today's guest, Sheree Russell, who's a shipper receiver here in Lethbridge. Welcome, Sheree. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. For anybody who's just tuning in, the way this podcast works is we'll just have Sheree share her life story with us. She's going to talk about where she grew up, what her family life was like, education, you know, those sorts of things, whatever comes to her mind. And then she's going to share with us her personal labor history, you know, what kinds of jobs she's had over her life. And then we'll take it from there. So Sheree, the floor is all yours. Again, thank you for inviting me. This is new. You're my, you're my first podcast. My name is Sheree Russell. I am 45 years old. I grew up in Lethbridge. I was born in Calgary. I uh, lived a little bit in Oak and Tokes and Red Deer, Red Deer more later in life, but basically born and raised in Southern Alberta. I'd schooled here, elementary, junior high, and high school. I did not follow up on secondary, uh, post-secondary, pardon me. I played a lot of sports. Where did you go to high school? I went to LCI, actually, Lethbridge okay. Collegiate Institute. Cool. All right. There I played basketball, and I actually was original 15 on the rugby team there. I was one of the first members of the women's rugby team. Uh, ironically, in three or two other teams here in Southern Alberta, I was one of the original 15s uh, for women's rugby here, which was incredible, in, including the leaps and bounds we've come over the years. That's cool. Yeah. I wouldn't say we were a super loving family per se. I mean, we, we get along and we liked each other. Um, we kept to ourselves and only talked when necessary. And we were one income household. Dad was the only worker and mom was the stay at home mom. And there was four of us, two brothers and a sister. What did your dad uh, do? Uh, he was a heavy duty mechanic for years. He actually just okay. recently retired in the last couple. So okay, he's living life right now, do, being a heavy duty mechanic on the side for fun, I guess. <laughs> Both of my parents have just recently retired. They also live here in Lethbridge. Most of my family is Southern Alberta, uh, mainly Okotoks, Calgary area, and Milk River, and Warner, Ken area, mostly Milk River. After that, I started working when I was 14. I was a caretaker of my mom's boss's children. She had a home-based service, and my mom was one of her delivery drivers. I babysat her kids over the summer so I could buy my first bike. Nice. I went through multiple jobs. I worked at McDonald's. I worked at Subway. Uh, I worked on farms growing up during harvest and, and whatnot and throwing bales and learning cattle. And I proceeded into just kind of little going nowhere jobs like the fast food industry. And, and don't get me wrong. I, I highly respect that industry. I just, it wasn't for me. Yeah, totally. uh, yeah, my first job was at McDonald's. So I, I totally understand. But yeah. And it's great. It's great experience, but I, I didn't much care for it. I eventually stumbled into the service industry, ironically, but on the alcohol side, I worked in bars and pubs for more than 20 years. I did everything from DJ to bounced. I served, I bartended, I bust tables. Uh, I was management at one point. Did that for a long time until I got hurt and I realized it wasn't worth it. And I just went into construction for a few years. You got hurt in the service industry and then you went into construction? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> Ironically. Actually, I got hurt in a fight and I severed some tendons in hand. I was breaking up a fight and I was off for much longer than I cared to be. So oh, okay. uh, it wasn't worth it. The, you start to get jaded after a while. And of course, the alcohol industry is a pretty volatile industry, depending on how you look at it. So I did. I went into construction. I started my carpentry apprenticeship and I made it to third year. In that, I started my plumbing apprenticeship, but not really. I only did about 25 hours, so I didn't even finish my first year. I realized that also was not for me. And then I had an opportunity to work for the Black Velvet Distilling Company. So I moved to the other side of the alcohol industry, uh, more into production. And I've been there since. And it's hands down the coolest job of my life. Nice. What year did you start there? Uh, 2016. <clears throat> oh, okay. So seven years. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And what are you doing there? You're a shipper receiver there? 
Uh, the shipper receivers. So I receive all their dry base goods, their bottles and boxes, and sometimes their chemicals and whatnot, um, yeast. If it comes off a truck, more or less, I unload the majority of it and load it. And I keep up with their lines and, and feed their uh, production lines. But I started out actually as janitorial there, so I would clean the plants. Mostly spills, like it wasn't cleaning offices and, and washrooms and whatnot. I just clean spills and clean the plant and just basic upkeep there. And then I moved into the blending there for a little while. And their blending department is basically where you make the whiskey, you mix the whiskey and you right. um, move it into the barrels and out of the barrels. And then I moved back into janitorial and then back into this position now where I'm driving the forklift for them on the one end. Cool. And how long have you been doing <clears throat> shipping? Two years, almost three years, I think. Okay. Two so, for sure. So two out of the last seven. Okay, cool. Black Velvet is the best place you've worked or it's shipping receiving is the best job you've had? Black Velvet is the best place I've worked. And I, okay. Don't get me wrong. I've had some cool jobs. Sure. Uh, but this one is definitely the coolest. Just the whole yeah. process of the place. Uh, the way they treat their employees too is is pretty good. They're a pretty stand-up company. So. Nice. And you get to drive the forklift and everything? Yeah, I drive the forklift. <laughs> so I, I move all their... It's Jenga every day. I got to figure out where to put them. So. That's awesome. Do you have to load trucks too? Uh, once in a blue moon. Not very often. Okay. Um, I have another guy at the other end. He That's his main position. But we have uh, offhand three, six... Six, seven forklift drivers full time, each cool. one doing a different thing. So nice. And you said you have three siblings. Well, wow, that's that's also a loaded question. Um, oh, I found out later in life that I have some other mixed siblings. Yeah, I, I think all together there's seven and a half of me, or six and I, there's a handful of us, anyways. But right. I grew up with three others. Yes. Right. What are they doing right now? My one brother works for a framing company around here, or a lumber company. My other brother, last I'd heard, he was in and out of the oil rigs. And when he's not on the rigs, he's management for a construction company. I don't recall which one. And my sister is a healthcare aide at a oh. home here on the north side. Okay, cool. Nice. So variety in your family. Very big variety. <laughs> <clears throat> nice. Cool. So that brings us to the end of your life story, hey? Well, yeah, it's quick and fast, but yeah, yeah the late in life ADHD diagnosis kind of skewered that a lot. So. Yeah, me too. I was diagnosed about three or four years ago. So yeah, yeah. same. It just uh, opens up your eyes. I mean, it's kind of too late to help you in school, but it sure makes things make a lot more sense. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely some clarity as to the whys and hows of how I functioned and function to this day. So yeah, and you don't have to be, oh, I'm so absent minded. I'm always forgetting stuff. And now you know. And so you can't, instead yeah. of like punishing yourself, say, well, okay, well, there's my brain's different. And so I just have to. Yeah try to accommodate that so right right and what can i do better next time instead totally. of being so hard on yourself absolutely yeah do you have to use the reminders and on your phone and stuff to so you don't forget yeah i it? use that i use uh my smartwatch of course i have yeah. notebooks everywhere <laughs> uh, but mostly i just rely on meds and that's not always a surefire way but yeah for me well, you know, it's not just ADHD meds, but meds just in general don't really affect me as much so i get headaches and stuff and those don't work. ADHD meds, all they pretty much do is help keep me alert, which is helpful right, right. if I'm like driving and stuff. So I don't fall asleep, right. but they don't improve my memory or anything like that. I just have to like remember to put, always put my keys in the same place. Always put my phone in the same yeah. place. Apple AirTags have actually come in handy, even though I'm not an Apple user. My partner is, and it's actually definitely come in very handy on several yeah. occasions. So Yeah, I've seen those. I, I've thought about getting them. I'm, I might look into it at some point. I actually I recommend them. They they go on sale every now and then on on Amazon, but yeah, they have saved us a few times. Yeah, I'll have to keep my eyes out. The Alberta Worker Podcast is a proud member of the Labor Radio Podcast Network. Here's a jingle from another member of the network. Hey folks, it's Bama Athreya, your host on the Geek Podcast. You can find us on Stitcher, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. And this show is now part of the Labor Radio Podcast Network. You can discover more than just us by visiting their website at laborradionetwork.org. The Labor Radio Network will help you find your favorite union podcast or radio show, besides this one, of course. And now, back to the show. 
you're listening to the Alberta Worker Podcast. So another question I ask all my guests after they finish sharing their life story and their labor history is, how has your intersections of marginalization affected your experiences as a worker? So that could be gender, it could be ethnicity, it could be religion, economic class, sexual orientation, ability, if you are disabled anyway, you said you have ADHD, ageism, whatever. I don't know. I was, I was pretty clueless throughout my adult life as to... Um, whether I was being marginalized or not. I actually, I was pretty lucky in the sense that I have a really caring and protective family and friend base. I'd say probably the majority of my jobs, if not all of them, were heavily in the male-dominated fields. Right. And I just kind of worked my way from the bottom to the top as best I could in each part of that, if I could. Working in bars, of course, I was one of the few female bouncers. We definitely had to start from the bottom most of the time. You had to prove your worth and you had to do it in such a way that you were the scrappy girl with a problem, for lack of better terms. I always did my best to respect people as people and I was a listener. I'm a good fighter, but I don't like it. I was gifted that way, but I would rather talk to you than use force any day. But if I have to, I... I I would. I would always stand my ground. I learned to stand up for the underdog a lot, being one. But I definitely worked for my reputation. Sometimes it precedes me in a, geez, what have I done kind of way. But only in the sense that if I did have to use force, did I hurt you? Because I, I, I did it for a long time. I don't remember the majority of the interactions. So sometimes when I see a face in public and I smile like, hey, I know that person. I don't know how or where. And generally on their reaction back to me tells me whether it was a good or bad interaction <laughs> at the time. So sure. I'd like to think that I'm still not that person either. Right? Like I don't, I've tried to never judge people. I've tried to never hold things against them. But of course it's hard and you learn to be an adult and either look past it and move on or if you're going to sit on it, sit on it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, I was a late in life uh, out of the closet person, I probably didn't come out to my family till I was probably in my mid thirties. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody knew. Like they're like, "Well, duh, it's about time." <laughs> but it, it's, things happen for a reason, I believe. I I never really had felt discriminated against because of that. Okay. Whether I was in the closet or not, until recently, actually, I'd say that the polarization of today's political state, if you will, uh, has definitely some attitudes, if you will, and I've definitely noticed it lately. It's tough to work around. It's tough to accept because I'd never actually personally had to deal with it. So I guess in a way, I was I was really lucky about that. So uh, it, it definitely sucks, but I just do my job, do my thing, and then I ignore them as best possible. Yeah, yeah, totally. All right. So the last question I have for you is if people are interested in, you know, learning more about Cherie Russell or um, the sort of stuff you have to share with people is there somewhere they could go to follow you with social media or if you have your own blog or podcast or anything like that uh, i'm actually fairly new to the blog and podcast world i do uh, okay. follow a few people including yours um i mostly just do the facebook thing but i do it in, in small doses because it gets a little overwhelming with the whole state of things but it, it's just my first and last name at facebook it's Shree russell at okay facebook all right, they can just look you up, see if you're there. All right, cool. And as well, if anybody wants to follow the Alberta Worker, you can find us on social media, of course. Just search us up on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also visit our website at albertaworker.ca. And when you're there, you can sign up for our newsletter. We have daily, weekly, and monthly options. If you like this podcast, please rate it in your podcast app and leave us a review. That helps people know that they should subscribe and listen to it as well. If you want to support the Alberta Worker, you can visit albertaworker.ca slash support where you become a monthly subscriber or send us a one-time contribution support from listeners like you help keep the alberta po worker podcast going if you want to be a guest on the alberta worker please email us at podcast at albertaworker.ca or dm us on any of our social media accounts thanks again sheree for joining us today thanks everybody for tuning in and as always solidarity solidarity thank you